Musicians Talk Show is brought to you by Bandzoogle. Bandzoogle makes it easy to build a stunning website for your music in minutes. Choose from hundreds of mobile-friendly themes, then customize your design and content in a few clicks with Bandzoogle's easy visual editor. All the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including tools to sell your music and merch commission-free right on your website, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, integrations to pull in content from all your online services like Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud, and live support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. Banzoogle plans start at just $8.29 a month and include your own free custom domain name. So go to Banzoogle.com to try it free for 30 days, and be sure to use the promo code TMTS to get 15% off your first year of your subscription. Okay, before we get started, Matt and I have lots of great ideas to improve the podcast, but we can't do it without you. So if you want to help us grow, click support the show at musicianstalkshow.com and consider signing up for our Patreon. We have tons of great perks and rewards for you, such as early guest reveals, a weekly live Q&A, and access to a monthly exclusive episode only for our patrons. Sign up for our mailing list on our website to gain access to our private community on Discord. There you can communicate with Dallas and I directly about all things TMTS. You can also follow at Musicians Talk Show on Instagram to discover new episodes, vote in polls, and join the conversation. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Shot. Your voice sucks. Thanks. Let me get back here on the couch. So these actually recline. Yeah, where does it go? I think you just sit back. Oh, nice. Did it work for you? (laughs) That's a no. (laughs) For those of you listening, we just... Oh, we're recording already? Yeah. (laughs) We're trying to get this reclining couch to work so we can get ultra comfy. I bet there's a secret do lever. the best podcast of all time. I and instead, we just basically lever. Where is the, the couch. secret lever at? Maybe it doesn't recline at all. It bro. definitely does. He told me it does. Okay. Oh, I found I it. I found it. Ah, what did you it's find? on the inside. Inside? Yeah, cool. You got to reach inside. You feel it? Oh, there it is, my friend. Boom. Yes. That is secret. That's not a feeling. Oh, like. welcome to the Musicians Talk Show where we podcast in luxury. Yeah. One of your two co-hosts, Dallas Dwight. And I'm Matt Tolly. And um, this is episode 54. Jesus. And you know what? I'm not even going to cut all that stuff at the beginning because it's funny and charming. We're so Ooh, charming, nice. Matt. Say, speak for yourself, not me. Uh, I'm badass all the time. <laughs> You're right. Matt's not charming <laughs> at all. Matt's a dope. So we have um, we have kind of a loose agenda today. Yeah, we're just going to talk. My we're voice is it pretty shot. Easy. I think everybody's going to notice that my voice is barely here. What do you I've, think? I've always noticed your voice Maybe is real, crank, real bad. Oh, yeah. Just crank the gain up on it like crazy. <laughs> oh, that'll it, solve the problem. You, that will, dude. You want it to solve. Dude, it probably won't. It'll probably make it sound worse, clicky and poppy. Ugh. Anyways. so One we, thing I wanted to say is uh, merch is ready. Yeah, that shirt is awesome. We have a baseball roll. t-shirt in our store. If you go to musicianstalkshow.com. I'm stoked about that. There's a link at the top for a store. Or we can go to musicians talk, <laughs> musicianstalkshow.com slash store. Yeah, our boys at Mad Park Designs hooked it up at the Playroom. And uh, they're going to basically keep continuing to hook us up. If uh, you guys want shirts, they're going to make them. Yeah, so let's... Uh, you, you mentioned earlier today when we were texting, you wanted to explain to the fans um, kind of how that how our process works so they're not worried oh yeah so yeah we we basically have a great hookup with mad parks where they can uh, make our shirts as you guys request them so if you guys order a shirt we'll fucking Made have it printed up order. in your size and uh you'll get your size exclusively so that's, that's good because you, you get extremely uh you know you can get any size you want yeah uh, it's it's bad because the turnaround times are a little bit longer Sure, but, they have um, to order shirts you know, and whatnot. Compromise. That's how it goes. So we got you guys shirts made to order. Yeah, that's easy for us financially too. This is this all yeah, made the, to help the yeah. show, so it's not it's not made yeah, to break our banks even bank. more. We already and are the, doing um, all this for free. <laughs> exactly. And so. the biggest the biggest thing about it is um I forgot, so continue with what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, Patreon is gonna be added to that too. So if you're a Patreon and you subscribe to our podcast uh through that, you'll get a at the certain level. I'm not positive you remember think, what tier it is i think we have it at the highest tier okay. and i think i'm gonna bump it down to the third tier it's a good idea because what they're, do you think they're because they're good man and i want people to wear them i like i like the way they look they turned out killer so they're good shirts so uh we we should say how much we're selling for they're 20 dollars. but yeah. since we're so excited that we have them the early bird you, special $15. early bird special you get them for 15 dollars 25 percent off yeah so now will only last how long you want to run that special for a couple weeks week, yeah it's a good idea whatever. we'll get some out there you guys check them out if you saw it on our instagram post and also our facebook post and it's also on our store at musicianstalkshow.com yeah and these are um i can't emphasize this enough this isn't just like 
your regular black t-shirt with a logo. These now they're are nice. Really, they're really nice. nice. Champion is the brand, yeah. right? They're pretty good brand, yeah. right? We had, yeah, we had one. So we had one made for Prep and Barry, and they, they actually did it as like a, you know, check this shirt out. And we were like, oh, these are killer. And we're probably going to get some more Prep and Barry and ones like yeah. that, too. The there baseball shirts are super comfortable. So we have, uh, it's a black shirt with a with white sleeves yeah. and a white logo. The white Musicians Talk yeah. Show logo on it. And um, I love it. I think it's a great starter shirt. I would like to eventually get with you, Matt, and come up with some uh, some more creative like shirt ideas yeah and i've been thinking about it and i just have no idea man it's cool because we can yeah, like do them we, right on our ipads or something, we both you know have I mean? the ipad pro and that's great with the software and ability you're able to do with that i can come up with a million t-shirt ideas or whatever and you could crisp them up even like if i send you an idea you use you canva can, dude you got to use canva it's canva's so good. good for instagram stories and whatnot i like for it's good for a lot for creative of like really drawing and yeah, stuff it's like not that. For that right that's what that's what i want yeah, and also it has more fonts. Uh, Canva has a lot of fonts, actually. It's a great. Yeah. That's a great app, but it's free. I signed up for the uh, premium one to get a resize oh, nice. function. Is it cool? It's nice. Well, it had it had one function that I needed right then. The so resize I up like the blow free, it up or for the yeah. So for the free down. thirty day trial. So I created the the brand image for our, the LA Maybe shows coming up. We had two poster. Oh, okay, things use made. Canva. So instead of doing like a poster. I was talking to the guys and I was like, we're not going to print them. We're not going to put them up. And a poster like 8 by 11 11 by 17 either one, they're not conducive to social media because they, they just don't fit anything. So right. what I did is I was going to, I just created an Instagram post. So a yep. perfect square yep. with all the info on it. Yep. And that's, that's Canva's great at. Around. Canva's got all those templates. It's awesome. But the event image header in Facebook is a bigger size. It's a horizontal rectangle. So I was like, I can do it in Photoshop. It just takes forever. Canva has a resize button where you click resize, type in the mentions, hit go, and it's done. Nice. Dude, it's the fastest. If you're it's a graphic quick. designer, it's it's so nice. I, <laughs> like, I do it for our stories now because I can do it on my phone, and it's hard to always get the iPad out. And like if I'm doing them at yeah. work or something like that, my boss sees the iPad come out and thinks I'm just doing that. You know, yeah. I can quickly pick up my phone, and dude, I make those Instagram stories pretty quickly now. And Canva's uh, great. Canva's really nice because of the, uh, it's, it's all We're really doing high quality sponsor for fucking Canva now. Yeah. They should be paying us. <laughs> we should see if they can get them on sponsor on the show. We should because we, we use them. them. I use them exclusively. And I can for... totally talk about it. We could both talk about it. Absolutely. Well, me more than you up. though because I'm better. Let's hit them up. Uh, you are better, <laughs> but um, you know I just try and compete with you. It's your world, B. I'm just living in it. Absolutely. Have you ever thought about what if it actually was your world? It is. And no, no one wait, else, wait, wait. No one else really. Is this a hypothetical? Exactly. No one else really existed. It was all just part of your like video game so to speak interesting this is starting to remind me of our concept album yeah <laughs> it is your world and there's a ghost taking over everybody you know for some reason you're impenetrable see look i'm already fucking <laughs> writing this shit writes itself <laughs> this shit writes itself <laughs> dude i'm pumped for that me too man i'm ready i've been thinking about it a lot i got did you see yeah? the stuff i added to the uh i didn't let me pull it oh, up while, while you vamp for a minute it is basically my thought process of how the record should progress and the changes that it should go through. Like so Let's that way when we oh, here it is. as we so as we're writing these songs, we now know what we should be writing about at what point. You know what I mean? I have, this is how the I see the story Am unfolding. I s oh, okay, I see. Okay, keep going. All right, so I'm I reading the, while you talk. Yeah, I see the story unfolding in this way. So like basically, like any movie or any uh, plot for a TV show or anything like that, um, you know, you want to be you want to be like a enticing in the beginning. Take the reader through a whole bunch of reader watch or whatever through a whole bunch of you know problems or whatever wherever you see the the because you want it to, each song's gonna have to be about something right right and now now we'll kind of know where they're at where we're about you I know? have the epic battle song I have dude that one. perfect dude, it's I, going to I was be hoping heavy that you would balls. like see some stuff and be like oh I already got this cool yeah that's awesome and I showed Matt before I never really talk about it but I've been doing a lot of orchestral stuff and I showed you yes. some of that too and I want to incorporate some of that too yes absolutely dude I love I was just checking out all your scores and stuff like that man we definitely should incorporate that into the uh, the concept album because that's gonna be awesome what's up Jordan <laughs> oh she's walking around can you hear me now can you hear me now we have a guest uh, this is gonna be really cool yeah, it is, dude. I'm ready. I'm ready to get started on it. Do you want to pick some time out today before we leave, and let's get some scheduled time to put into it? I know I you got it. a lot of stuff coming up, so I love it. Yeah, yeah. Should we talk about any of that? You I don't to? know. We can I'm talk down, about dude, the gigs. I, I'm definitely talking about let's it. Let's talk, let's about, talk it, about it. Let's do it. Tell them what happened, dude. Um, <laughs> this is really funny. And honestly, shot, so if, if you're, li you if you're listening to this, you probably have questions, the same questions I have that I don't have the answers to yet. Right. And um, let so me we'll preface let me preface this by saying we don't really know if this is 100 percent legit. Uh, but we're going to take a stab at it anyway. So. Sure. We'll just touch on it. We don't have to talk too much about it. Maybe next time we'll have a lot more information. I have to yawn. Yawn then. 
Dude, I don't know what it is. Every time we start the podcast, I yawn 30 well, look, to 50 times. We just got times. all comfortable on this giant couch. This thing is this really is comfortable. The nicest couch of all time. Oh, man, it goes far oh, back. no I'm way. In. All right, oh, my I'm, God. I'm horizontal. <laughs> all right, we have to get the, the picture for the... <laughs> we want to get the gimbal. Right now. All right, again, here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, Matt, tell them about that gimbal, dude. We'll come back. We'll yeah, circle we'll, back to we'll the Let's do a product spotlight on that. That'll be cool, because that thing saved my ass this weekend. Picture on the couch. Oh, we're just chilling. I can't get myself and you. You're too far. My away. head literally goes behind this pillow here too. <laughs> I know. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe we'll come back to that. We were going to take the selfie for you guys, but it didn't work. We're too um, comfortable. Yeah, we're we're completely we're way too comfortable to be taking right pictures right now. This is a now, terrible, this couch this is a terrible huge. podcast for musicians. Yeah, it's a fun podcast for us. Musicians love couches, though. Trust me, so, <laughs> it's one of their defining traits. All right. So, so you we um, touched on the. Oh yeah, tell your story. Yeah, yeah. Come so on, our dude. our drummer Foz. He messages the group chat and says, hey, guys, I submitted us to this uh, contest to be on a TV pilot and win two grand. And we're like, okay. He said, I don't, I don't know if it's legit, but whatever. I just submitted this. It should be fun. We fucking came in first place. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. That's so killer. <laughs> so now they message the us back. having a strong song, dude. Seriously. Like this was power. for peace of mind for you guys listening. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so they submitted that song and they want him to be on a reality TV show, dude. And tell them what the show is. We know what we know of so far. Because you don't know, know how much I can of, say, to be honest. Uh, I haven't a signed of, anything yet, but stuff is coming for me to sign, and I don't yeah. want to give away anything that I'm not supposed to give away. But but you know it's two bands competing, right? And honestly, I don't know. So like, I don't know the information yeah, yeah. that people like want right. to ask me. You know, right? Uh, but what I do know is this weekend coming up, March eighth, uh, ninth, and tenth, twenty nineteen. If you're listening away in the future, right? Um, <laughs> we're gonna be going to uh, South Carolina. Yeah, a different part of South Carolina, Greenville, right. South Carolina. Right and um doing stuff we don't know what but yeah we can't really talk about it. even <laughs> if you did know like it's kind of a right it's well they wouldn't tell us right it's it's a competition yeah it's us and one you know other it's band. A competition between you and another band and um and i that's I all they said on, they were like that's money all on we the say. LA, we were like uh okay <laughs> i got my so, money on the la maybe yeah <laughs> pound for pound. i got my money on the la maybe absolutely i can't wait it's gonna be a killer i hope it's like a fight like, or like or like we were joking like it's it's gonna be an obstacle course <laughs> yeah dude totally totally if it's an obstacle course dude we win right it's gonna happen it's probably a triathlon. Actually, we think we are, the, again, we don't know, but we're thinking it's going to be like a song in a day kind of thing. Yeah. That's Which is good because we've guess. been warming up with the 24 hour. Right. Day. We've never they're done gonna, that they're before. Gonna, you know what's going to be really funny? They're going to be like, you have to write yeah. a song in 24 hours. Oh, no. And everyone's going to be like, oh my God. I'll be like, bitch, I write five in 24 <laughs> hours. Like, All right. So which one are we going to go with? Guys, I got five right here. Yeah. <laughs> I got 10 done. Pick one. <laughs> done. Moving on. Yeah. No, man. It would probably have to be like, because how are they going to keep um, like somebody who doesn't already we're, have a song We're going to go in with some ideas, I think. Right, I was going to say. So that's cool. You guys have been jamming a lot lately, so that's really cool. We've been trying to get our practice in. So that's going on. And, uh, and then, so that happened this week. That's literally, killer. literally, the weekend got planned this week. That's and cool. then also this week, we booked scramble. two gigs over St. Pat's weekend. Yeah. So it's been a ridiculous week. We that's have be March killer. 15th, we're at Wild Wing Cafe uh, Airsley, which is nice because Wild Wing's really hard to get into. Cool. And then St. Pat's Day, 317. Episode. We are at Tin Roof, which yeah, is dude. also another hard one to get into. And yeah. we managed to wiggle our way into both of them in the same weekend. <laughs> and what's so really cool. funny is um, we, we had a meeting with Bruce the other day about kind of the way forward with the band and how to proceed and stuff. And he said one thing he picked up on is, is we love to prepare and then, you know, execute at some un unknown later date. Mm -hmm. That's a mistake. That's, that's almost the perfectionism part. You have part to, and, and have I've to seen this true there. in my own life time and time and time and time again, and I always forget the lesson, and I'm always reminded how stupid I am. Yeah, you set the deadline, and then you accomplish it in that date. It's the, uh, what is the rule? Is it Parkinson's rule? Parkinson's law says work oh. expands or contracts to fill the time allotted. It's the rule that explains how you get a three-month term paper done in one night. Right, right. Because... You, it took you one night to do it, but you had three months, so it took you three months. Right. You know what I mean? So however much time you have, if I say, Matt, write an album, right. it's going to take you a year. If I say, Matt, write an album and have it on my desk by April 1st, right. it's going to be there. Yeah. Whether, it's going to be there. Right. Whether you know? or not you loved it or not, it doesn't matter. Like that's, that's, that's interesting, isn't it? And that's the same thing with the 24-hour EP. Yeah. I think that's Parkinson's Law. I could be wrong. I don't know what the who so. it was or what law it was, but yeah, that makes a lot um, of sense, dude. What's that saying, deadlines dude? will will force I'm you to get it done, game, man, dude. Huh? My mind, I'm gonna, I'm straight up. As soon as you leave, I'm doing like a full yoga session, trying to like clear my good, head. Good, dude. That's a good move. Good move. A little meditation, dude. What? Um, I need to do that. What more. was I just saying before talking about just deadlines and stuff like that? And yeah, but how did I get on the deadline topic? Uh, 
I wish this was in the future and I was listening to it so I could hit the back, like mm-hmm. the 15 seconds 15 back. Seconds. Be like, oh, that's what he's talking about. about. Dude, that's interesting. Can't do that in real time, though. Nope. All right, so what, what it was it, though? Come on. We're talking about, we talked about the opportunity for the, the band. It was the gigs. Oh, yeah, the gigs. The gigs, right. So the Bruce was saying, um, or we were saying, you know, I, I think the earliest we'd be ready to play a gig would be, and I said, you know, May. Mm-hmm. And we were like, yeah, that's reasonable because I have to get my, stu- my, my studio's down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I ha- right, I'm moving. in charge of making the You're backing in the middle tracks. Of moving. And right. we still have 10, 15, 18 songs left on our list to learn that I have to make the backing tracks for. And then we can learn that's and then we can play. Right, right. So I said, I can have that done by May. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, sure enough, two gigs pop up. We're ready. Yeah, we got because be of ready. how it's right, right. You're, you're ready. You're just ready because you have to be. Yep. So we threw in a couple songs that don't have tracks, that don't have clicks, and you just play them. That we learned in a day, and right. we're just fine. You know? Perfect. Whatever. It'll be fine. Cool. That's very cool, man. So that's an interesting thing I would say to you guys out there. Set yourself a deadline. Set yourself a deadline. It. Book the gig. Are you yep. ready to play the gig? Who cares? Book it. You'll you be ready. Be. You will. You, be. I promise. You will find the time <laughs> to get ready when you know that gig. That's coming. a good point. Uh, we really I, we good. took it a step further in Osara. We booked studio time before we had all of our songs written. Right. And that's all of a good, sudden, we wrote them all. Yeah, that's interesting. Bruce was smart to bring that back up to you again. Obviously, you did know it, but man, a good reminder is fucking key at the right time. And you know what I mean. Bruce yeah. is a good guy too. Bruce is a really good guy. He sat us down and we had a good a good chat. That's awesome. I, it was nice to have him talk to the, my bandmates about stuff because um, I feel like a lot of the things he said I also was saying, but it's it's nice to come from a different yeah. person. You know? yeah. It can't always come from you. And I'm not sitting here saying I have all the answers or I'm the pro or whatever. But um, Bruce is convincing. Yeah, Bruce he's, is convincing, and he's got a, a track record of, and, of doing and well. experience you know? in doing this. So this is, and yeah. he spent decades doing uh, exactly what managing exactly right. what we're trying to do exactly, exactly we're trying to be a cover band making money doing that kind of scene yeah you're lucky to have a side friend, of course dude, it's not the main that's really dream, cool that's a really cool thing and he did that for you know s- uh, seven years he played in it and then another bunch he he booked it he was in charge of booking like 600 clubs or something like okay right so imagine i mean he awesome. has to look at all the bands and he um, can immediately tell whether or not a band's good you know right so right that's he's awesome. a good person to talk to about what to look for what to be on stage like all that kind of stuff yeah so the shows are coming up and you guys are ready to go it's gonna be awesome. We'll see. We were supposed to practice today, but we got sidetracked auditioning a guy and then doing all this stuff. Audition, so. uh, auditioning new guitar player. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, dude! How'd yeah. that go? It went all right. Yeah, it went all right. Yeah, he showed up. I, I, I love him. He's a really good guitar player, even better drummer, and even better keyboard player. Uh-huh. And a really, really good singer too. He has a beautiful voice. Oh, good, good. And um, so he's a really good utility guy. And we really want to use him, and he's and he's nice. But he showed up today, and he was like. Um, we were like, all right, what you want to start with? He was like, oh, uh, I didn't learn any of the songs. Uh, I was like, wait, what? Got to be prepared. <laughs> yeah, that's what it goes. I he totally was like, well, it. I mean, I didn't want to learn them wrong. And I'm not the best ear learner, or whatever that word is, anyway. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, well, that's yep. not great. That's but not a great thing. So I know he has the capability, and I, and we all like him as a person. So Well, there you go. You'll if get he, there. If he wants the gig, I'm, it'll be his. But So my question, are you <laughs> taking him to the that opportunity? That was not the way to do it. Are you it. taking him to the opportunity um, for the, the No, game? no. We're, this is going to be just okay. the four of us. Still still trying out and auditioning. Yeah, he's going to come over Wednesday, and we're going to work through some stuff. But, cool, cool. Um, awesome. That's killer. That's that'd nice. be a good person to send that tab book to that I'm working on. So yeah, I'm, working on, yeah. I'm working on a tab book for the LA Maybe. That's smart. One, because I think it's a cool merch item. I think we have interesting enough music that people would want to learn to play it on guitar. Yep. And... Um, Agreed. It it's weird. Like and you do Matt, it anyways. You would know, it's you so would know easy that, for you, you to do. You could dude. probably explain this better than me. The music is not as easy as it sounds. It's deceivingly hard. It's complicated. It's, it's there's changes all over the place. Because Dallas is a bored guitar player. He <laughs> he can't do just the same thing over and over again. He's gonna be changing it up. It's every the Van chance Halen uh, syndrome. Yeah, it really is. It's something that that like. Uh, Every three bars, you throw in something you've never thrown in before. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's a lot of little stuff that you you don't hear when you're just listening. You have to really, really actively listen. Yeah, like um, pushing, you know, yeah, the, the chord ahead of the beat. Timing stuff is important on one and three, but on two, it's normal. Like yeah. that kind of stuff. That, like, yeah, and it's just a ton of little things like that. And okay, that's cool, a, man. I want to get that book. It's gonna be sick. That's me sick. I think it's gonna be cool. Yeah. How I close are you? Cool. Uh, I have She's Reckless done. Oh, okay. I was actually going to do guitar profiles with full bass and drum transcriptions well, that'd be as cool, well. too. Why not? Why so, not? Um, That's perfect. That's sick, dude. Good idea. I think that'll be cool. But the book itself, I think I want to actually print out and have, like, bound. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll sell that. I think that'd be cool. Sick. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, what else do we have on our list, man? I mean, lots of things, what man. Do you think are some we're all busy. Let's go off script. What do you think are some unique merch items we could do? Unique merch items for the for the musicians talk show. 
<laughs> we talked a little bit about it last time or, or yeah, a couple all, times ago. It's all on the Patreon tiers, right? That's what we, we some have. Some of them. Yeah, okay. those are cool. But yeah. like, as far as like to fill out our store. Maybe like, we could and, do some polling. And you guys listening, we want to hear from you. What would be cool? What do you want? Yeah, maybe we'll put, do a, not a poll, but like a, uh, uh, at, an at, ask a question or whatever. And people can write in maybe something that they'd like to see. One thing the I really like cool. the idea of was the practice log or the practice yeah, book. Dude, yeah. Practice manual. Maybe that's a better whatever, word. Yeah, whatever you call it. It'd be something where you can log your practice time and uh, make sure you hold yourself accountable for practicing. Yeah. And also you're working on something consistently. You know, like you're working towards being a better sweet picker. You're working towards being a better... Uh, Paradiddler. Scale, maybe knowledge, <laughs> like moving modes and all that stuff. So Yeah. I yeah, there's lots really of things cool. that you could do with it. That's why it's so great. And it'd be good for any musician, not just guitarist, not just... Yeah, uh, violin, anyone. Yeah, anybody. So that's Anyone cool. practicing anything, really. Yep. I like that idea. <coughs> you could even make it so open-ended as to like someone to use it for like perfecting a handstand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. The musician's talk show. This is my uh, handstand log. Yeah, this is my handstand log. It's where I learned, <laughs> learned to hand, stand hands. Dude, I was looking at some of those yoga apps and like, I was like, what do the advanced poses look like? So I clicked over to the advanced and straight up, these people are like on their hands for like eight poses in a row. And Yikes. I'm just like, all right, not quite there. No, no, <laughs> I, I don't think I could do a handstand for five I, seconds. Dude, I used to be, I used to be able to do front hand springs, front oh, hand nice. springs over a chain link fence. Jeez. That's actually the first way I learned it was over Holy a chain link shit. fence. Holy shit. Because I was like, I wonder if, I run and jump and put my hands on this fence and then just kind of push myself oh, over. So, oh, you're at the top of the fence. I was thinking, dude, like what I had pictured, I was just like, how could somebody do that? Like do a handstand or like you plant your hands on the ground and then jump over the fence. No, no, no. I would <laughs> jump and put my hands on the fence and then front handspring okay, over. Okay, like, I met, I met, I just envision so, um, that so differently. It's so funny. And the first time you land on your butt and you're like, okay, well that kind of sucks. Right. And then the second time I was like, it. what if I just push off really hard? Right. Landing on my really feet. Flip the second over. time. That's crazy. I was like, well, that's pretty cool. And then I learned <laughs> how to do it on the ground. And then I was really good at handstands. I could hold them for like almost a minute. Dude. I would just stand on my hands like walk around. Like I was all, all crazy stuff, but I haven't done that forever. <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh man, my voice is shot. Dude, I was filming that video. I was like, it's a lazy podcast. Dude. Tell us me. about the video shoot. Oh, dude. So we had kind of a fucking catastrophe struck but it all worked out in the end luckily um so we talked to this photographer about doing some work for this next video or whatever and he was totally down and reassuring me that he's going to help us out and i told him we're doing this on a budget you know i mean i have this great idea but I listen think up by the way this is not how to do business right well, <laughs> you people listening <laughs> and i and i tried to avoid it as much as possible but this is how it happened and not uh, you I know, I know i know this is on his end for sure but um he uh basically so i had this plan together i wrote out the entire script the entire like what we'd be doing itinerary and everything all the spots were secured we had everything located like it was just all worked out in my what head what you're saying is you did all of the leg I did work all of this work <laughs> and i was like all i need you to do is like shoot this right he's a photographer right he's not a director he's not a producer i get that so you're I, the director i am the director case. in this case so i wanted him to shoot it and i'm and he's telling me he's gonna hook me up and do a great deal or whatever right and uh and definitely make sure it's affordable and the day before and i hit him up on monday which plan on shooting this thing on saturday I hit him up Monday. I said, hey, let's talk about this. I, and I sent him the uh, itinerary and plot and all that. And I said, let's talk about this thing. I want to you know, get, get your, your ideas and see if anything's not going to be doable, anything like that, right? If you don't see something being possible. And he said, I'm really busy. I want to talk about it. It looks great. This is going to be really helpful, uh, but I can't talk about it right now. I'm like, okay. So I waited a day, nothing. And then I hit him up again the next day. I had some more ideas, updated Good communication the, rule. Updated the plot. The rules. Updated the plot. And yeah, exactly. We talked about communication. And I, I kept thinking that too in my head. I'm going to follow yeah. up, make sure I stay on him. So Wednesday, I hit him up again. I'm like, hey, man, you got time to talk? Whatever. I don't have any time, man. I'm just redoing my house and here. And the whatever. shoot is when? Huh? The shoot is Saturday. When? So, so it's Wednesday. Yeah, so it's Wednesday. And I'm trying to find out. You know, Dude, I don't even know how much I'm paying. I know nothing. Let me, let me interject real quick. We had our videographer for New Year's set up in like September. Right. So that's kind of how right. it should be yeah, going, definitely. right? Yeah, like definitely. Everybody's got their schedule cleared. It's going to happen. This is like Stephen Frantic and it's getting down to the last minute, but he assured me that he's, you know, he's good friends. He likes the band, all that stuff, and he's going to help us out. And I felt confident in him. Friday comes around and um, he basically finally gets, a, I, I think I had to hit him up still. He finally got to me with a, uh, a uh, plan or whatever and uh, hits me with a contract and with a price on it. And the price was way out of our budget. And I was like, Listen, I won't say, I won't say how much it was because I did promise him that I would not tell him because he said he was cutting me a deal well his deal his idea of a deal is way higher than what i thought um so anyways uh i had to i, was, I just realized that's not going to work and i have everything set up for the next day i have everybody available which is hard as, 
I know everybody knows he's, he's in a, a band, of, getting yeah. everybody's day cleared because we were going to do a full day of filming, you know, to get this, you know, cinematic kind of video. We had lots of scenes planned out, but all very reasonably budget wise. Like we didn't have to go out of our way to do it. We used all things we had and available to us. You know what I mean? So it was going to be great. I was really excited. Well, that new price tag definitely freaked me out because I'm like, well, dude, you, I thought we were helping me out. We never talked about a, a price at all. And uh, this is the last day, and you want me to sign this contract for some crazy number? And I'm like, I just think that maybe we sh we uh, can't handle your budget or your uh, fee, and we'll try and do it our own. And I t and I messaged him that I didn't get a response back. Whatever, it was nice as possible I as I could. I, I'm not willing. I'm not mad at him. I'm I'm disappointed that we didn't get to do the shoot I had envisioned. But in the end, it worked out really well because turns out iPhone. I have an iPhone X is a really awesome camera, and you can really get a lot done with it. And what I decided to do at the last minute was to spend a, on a reasonable price for me, affordable, $100 on a really nice gimbal that uh, I found on Best Buy's website. This should be and our it, product spotlight, by the way. We were yeah, trying to come up we were with talking one. about doing that. Let's do that. And um, it's a really awesome little, uh, little tool, man, because it makes all your actions on your camera. Like a lot of times the problem with shooting with your phone is the way you hold the phone is not a steady way to hold it. It's really small and you right. can flip. It shakes in your hand or whatever. Well, those gimbals with the motorized... Uh, it's a motorized gimbal essentially and it has a joystick on it and you can really get smooth shots, pan shots and uh, angles and stuff like that. So it really saved our, our ass and uh, I ended up filming a lot of it uh, by myself because uh, for the scenes that we didn't use me in, which you know, a lot of them are like cinematic shots, like each member doing something or whatever, right? right? I was able to film a whole lot of it, but then I just needed somebody to help out with the, while we play, because we we're gonna play, we played it live uh, in the room or whatever and we set the room up all right and I did all that work myself. You know, like I did all yeah. this work and I just felt like his price was too much for to justify that. And yeah. Um, so, Good yeah, point. we ended up filming ourselves. And then um, luckily we found another friend, Sejan, who we met that weekend. I met that weekend, but Craig's known her for a little while. Um, he met her through Sam Ash. And uh, she's a 19-year-old girl that uh, is a YouTuber. And she, she films all kinds of stuff like that and is big into photography, but just as a passion. And she really liked us and she wanted to do it for us. She held the camera and ended up going the extra mile. So we love her. And we're going to kick her some money for sure. Um, and you know it was just a really good deal man it worked out and I can't wait for this video to come out that's awesome I man. really can't wait it's awesome that gimbal what was the name of the company again oh yeah so it's, a it's hard to Japanese pronounce. or some kind of um, I'm not sure what kind of where it's from what is it called so so it's Ju Juan right I don't know how to pronounce it correctly Shiyun it's, it's Z-H-I-U I mean Y-U-N sorry Z-H-I-Y-U-N Good little gimbal, way more affordable. Way more affordable than I thought they were. I, I just, I'm glad I just took the time to look. The it one up I saw, I saw a video of it on Instagram, or whatever, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll buy that. Right. And I looked, at it, I was like, three ninety nine. Right. I was like, nah. And, and I don't know. And I, <laughs> I would have, I, mean, I would have done it for like. If you said you got that for seventy. Well, it's for seventy. It's like eighty now, I think, or whatever. They they got a to run a sale on. Them, of course, right after I bought it. Oh, but okay. You bought it for a hundred. Yeah, I bought it for a hundred. Ninety nine bucks. I, or it might have been like you have to buy a Best Buy credit card or something like that. I, I just looked online just recently and it was like eighty. And I, was, I mean. I bought it Friday and now it's eight, uh, for a hundred. Now it's eighty on on Sunday, That's so funny. something happened. Or it could be a credit card. I wish wasn't paying attention. But yeah, really, uh, really glad I got that thing. Man, I, I really hope this video turns out good. So I just wanted to tell everybody kind of this because you'd be surprised what you can do DIY nowadays. Don't forget that you have that phone in your pocket, and then just adding a simple rig to be able to yeah. hold that phone well and and uh, get the, uh, the one image shots. we took for the LA maybe was taken with my phone. And it's like a professional looking the image shot. that we use for the New Year's show, or so we talk well, the about? one of all of us in the outside the playroom. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. taking on my phone. Yeah, like, I mean, you that's were there, of course. You, of you course, pulled right. the it was but. awesome. I, I mean, that, that's the crazy thing is that uh, you know, you just sometimes you can get carried away with and not real and spending money and like and get, trying to get the right thing, or whatever, and realize you could do a lot of it yourself. So just DIY and especially in the beginning helps a lot, you know, because we have to spend money on mixing, we have to spend money on you know. Uh, obviously recording it with you and stuff like that we're paying you so like lots of things we have to pay for we can't just go yeah come in to spending that much money last on a minute, music yeah. video like especially last minute like that when it it just i didn't like the way it went about we should have been handled differently so in the long run it weren't that worked out but it's stuff to be aware of you know that's why it's worth telling the story and uh you know think about what you have uh, and how you can utilize what Poor you have business to make communication cool. too i mean dude are you yeah, trying to make that money goes right back to communication like, again you're trying to make money right exactly Exactly. What's the one? What the number one rule of business? Make it easy for them to give you your money. Exactly, I've heard that somewhere. Exactly, probably. I just, <laughs> you know, I wish we would have uh, would have discussed the money earlier. I guess because just going off of him, oh, don't worry, we're gonna help you. You know, like it's gonna, I'm gonna help you out. Send me no big problem. And I'm like, 
all right, well, I'm going to get some trust in you. Like That's kind of a red flag, I think. It is. That's what I said, too. I said it was a red flag. And then when he dropped the price on me, it was a red flag. I'm like, I don't know if he was like just afraid to tell me or it w- it is trying to get me committed. It is videography and- is not cheap. And it's almost I know, never I know. And as that, cheap and as that's you think not, it will be. Right, you know? and that's not the thing. Is I don't think he's not worth it. It's just that he understood my situation and decided to hold off in the last minute to bring yeah. up how much money it was. And it was a lot more money. So you're saying he, you think he may have been doing that on purpose, like that was a tactic. He might have felt like I needed to do it because I'm... And because you're desperate. Or, or because I'd gotten so far with him already and talked to him. But really, how much had we talked, right? Well, why would you wait until the day before... Yeah, because you had planned all this stuff. That's true. So too. he right, thinks right. he can so, drop the last minute, and you're stuck paying. It. That's a good point. So he, he could have been doing it as a tactic. Like now, desperate. I got no photographer, but I got all the setup. He knows I'm set up. I sent him the plot. I sent him. You know, I told him that we have this secured. We have this secured. So that could have been a plot. You know, and then like he's like now I feel obligated to go with him. If that was a plot, then that's just malicious. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. But the fact that he had a contract ready it scares me too. You know, like now now I'm in a contract too. I gotta if I sign this, I gotta pay you because I don't really know the you know the legalities of all that but if i sign a contract i'm legally bound to pay them right anytime you're changing money yeah a contract should probably be right established. but it's just at the last minute like that didn't feel good and we didn't discuss enough so just that's my only problem with that i had with it and we were able to pull it off and i just wanted to let everybody know that a hundred dollar gimbal can really turn out pretty awesome yeah but hopefully the video will be out like within the next two weeks so everybody can see it but obviously it has editing and we're still waiting for the song to come back too so once nice. it's out, we'll maybe so budget show it off a little video. bit. Check. You you wanted to talk about being visible, like putting a face to your music. That is another thing I was thinking about too. Is like um, I notice all the time that whenever I post on Instagram, we talk about this. Obviously, uh, face pictures do really well. Like people just want to see you and they want to know who they're following. Obviously, um, a lot of times you look at an Instagram page and there's nobody on it. You look scroll through their feed. There's no face. You can't even tell what this person looks like. That's even the, even the <laughs> account. Yeah, it's kind of what we are, but we're changing that, right? Working on it. So the idea being that uh, people feel more familiar and more uh, like in tune with what you're doing when they can see you and you know they see what's happening. So um, I think music videos are important uh, for bands nowadays, especially early on, to establish what a band looks like and also uh, you know the whole look of what they're going for. Like there's there's a whole look involved in being in a band, right? Like you try to at least you know hit some kind of look whatever your idea be to match up with your sound and uh putting your face to that also helps you know what i mean i just think it's it makes it more personal for the listener yeah. and the fan i think I've, I've definitely heard this before but people are buying you not your music exactly you know that's I mean? it man you've said that before you've definitely said that before well and I, I didn't definitely didn't come up with it i know but. you didn't come up with it but i mean i've definitely heard you say it so i know you know this and I'm just reiterating. And I feel it. like it's true with this like podcast I, too. People are buying into true. us. The pictures we've been posting do great. The podcast. Yeah. The know? pictures of our faces do great. That's and that takes time. You know, we got to build this thing yeah, over of course. years, not of course. just, you know, year. <laughs> so, yeah. So, our goal in Prep and Barium is to make a video uh, for every uh, song. And not that our faces be in every one of them, because obviously we're going to just do lyric videos to, you know, to just get them all out there or whatever. And, uh, but I want to do as many of them as we can. We can do them. The best we can, you know what I mean? And when we can do it, when we can budget to do it, you know what I mean? But yeah. I think early is good to have some out too because people can look at you. Dude, you know whose videos I really like? Osara. Like I was watching their whole YouTube channel and stuff like that. They've done a lot of cool videos, really? man. Like the new one's really awesome in the, in the junkyard. The one? Or it's not, it looks like a junkyard kind of, like it's got the stacks. Oh, of, that was uh, On the Mend, right? Yes, yeah. On the Mend. And they do, yeah, they smash through the glasses on the back I windows. I played that song. Oh. Yes. That song was ri- was finished right before I left. Oh, really? And I, I played that, that song at my last show with them. I played that. I one. did not know that. What a great song, dude! Killer cool song. One, yeah. Um, the the video turned out excellent though. They had an awesome team do it, and uh, that's what I'm talking about though. This whole thing that kind of got me on it. I mean, I was already on it. I definitely like wanting to make a video, and then I just started thinking about though how your face has to be in it. Like it's really important to have a face and for people to be able to see your band, you know, because people that's get attached point. to that. They they start liking personalities in the band and characters. You know, yeah. we have char- we have a band of characters for sure, you know. Did you listen to the David Lee Roth broker? Yes. yes. He said one thing that really stood out to me. He's a character for one, but he Love said him. um he said uh I am going to butcher this cuz I don't even really remember how he said it. Paraphrase, buddy. But he said something along the lines of like um I'm a, I'm a character, not an actor. That's a good point. So like so Rogan made the joke like if if David Lee Roth sat down or, or was like in a spacesuit. you'll be like that's fucking david lee roth right. in a spacesuit. but he said if denzel washington did it you'll be like hey that's an astronaut right you know what i mean because exactly. he's an actor he's the acting as the astronaut right but david lee roth is a character and that's a good that point. is always that character no matter what he's doing that's a good point he plays himself every time and not not necessarily playing a different 
person. And, and DL actors play this, different uh, characters. Characters are themselves. Exactly. He told it's this good. story, or is a fake story, of course, but he was t- he was making the point that of what I was saying. But he said, if the Lone Ranger sat down next to you and started telling you a story, you would be like, "It's the fucking Lone Ranger." Right. But if another guy sat down and told you the story, you'd be listening to the story, and the story would be the the center focal point exactly. of what's going on. Right. But if the Lone Ranger sits down, you're just focused on this is that character right, right. now. Like, right. I don't care what he's saying. Right. Like, right. <laughs> you're so enamored. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. David Lee Roth is that way. Um, who else? He's such is an like that? introspectual guy. I like him a lot. I like living. He's an him interesting talk. dude. Listening, he, he listening definitely to him will talk. jump from topic to topic and and kind of seem crazy. He's at some really point. hard to follow. Yeah, and he's but he's so artistic. Like you could it, artistic glows off of him. He's such yeah. a character. That's really part of him. Who else is like that though? Who else is a character? I mean, comedians are a Slash, lot like that. Slash for sure has a huge. Well, see, persona. comedians can go in a. I'm trying to think of like who could could not play anyone but themselves. And yeah, like Rogan, comedians can, are a little bit more malleable. Ask. Like they'll they'll be able to play different characters. Like and do Slash is not going to play anyone no. but Slash. No, he is himself, one hundred percent. He's probably one of the best examples. Actually, yeah, he really is. Probably, I, the I was, I was of thinking a the other day, and a you character know you've not made a, it when your silhouette is famous. I've always said that. I've like, always, I've always loved that you can buy a shirt. Like, you can just buy a shirt with a guy in a top hat and like with a yeah. guitar, and it's fuck. You know, it's Slash. You know what I mean? It's like there's no nobody else. It's crazy. What if? What if? Like insanely smart branding move that yep. was a complete accident yep <laughs> and and um i've heard the i've heard this from <sighs> musicians that make it um you either become like you either play yourself as a character like you, you lean into it and you just become yourself even more and that's what you do or you change and you evolve um some actors like i mean not actors sorry musicians like david uh, bowie is somebody who's changed his whole career what are some other uh, characters or sorry have musicians like that have evolved and changed throughout their career instead of just being the same person? He's he's pretty good example. He's evolved drastically. He's a great one. Um, um, Michael Jackson evolved a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. They're like a lot of the biggest stars. Prince, huh? Prince, Prince, right? absolutely, absolutely. I changed his name. Changed it to the artist formerly known as. He did that to get out of a record contract. I know, or is, I know, that, but- or is that a myth? I there's so much true. of that shit that's thrown that's around true, that's not I, really but true. But I just think that it's so crazy how he evolved as a as a. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it really is the record thing, but I think there's more to it. I'm sure there is. Yeah. One I thing wish I knew more it really that. seemed like he was uh, he was pretty missed if was anyone here. had any power over him. Right. Right. Yeah. He was going to do what Prince was going to do 100 percent of the time, and fuck you. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. Some other people who evolved, man. Like, um, try to think, like. Axl Rose has evolved a lot. Yeah, for sure. For and musically sure. and just, it seems, personally. Sure. I mean, like, if you listen to Appetite, it's just like Appetite sheer attitude, you know? like sheer, sheer attitude and rawness. And then he got so, like, deep in all the extra, you know, and, and everybody knows his life story. You know, he went through some pretty hard times and divorce and whatnot and all that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Lots of court stuff and all that. And that probably changed him a lot. And then you hear, like, Use Your Illusions and stuff like that, which some of that was already writ, written, written, Jesus. Written. Dude, Roden. I had to listen to some dude this morning tell me that Guns N' Roses, he was never really a big fan because he didn't like Axel's voice because he sounded like Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> I don't think that's true. And I was just like, you Gilbert be careful, dude. Gil- <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried is hard for me to listen to. This is my favorite. Axel is this is my talented favorite as fuck. Band, you better be careful. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell people that. Don't talk shit about Guns N' Roses around me. I don't want to yeah. hear it. Yeah. You're talking to the wrong person. Yeah. I'm not going to sympathize. Like, I don't care if you don't like them. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking talk to me about yeah. it. Like, you're talking to the wrong person. Yeah. You're not preaching to the choir. Here. <laughs> right. like, you you're will get some. You right. will get some. You're preaching pushback. to the devil in that. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, what there you go. Be. That's a good example. Equally useless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just Crazy. a different audience. Exactly. Crazy. Uh, I had some other things listed here. Preaching to the devil sounds like a fucking album title. Dude. I love it. Riding with the devil. Dude, David Lee Roth. He talked about doing that little scream thing. He said he started doing that when he was twelve years yeah, yeah, yeah. old. Well, I he, love it that. wasn't that high scream. No, but it was something. He it was, was just his, mimicking. Ah! He was mimicking somebody. Do you yeah. remember who he said? Who he was mimicking? It was uh, like some of the old black like, old, soul yeah, singers. old soul singers. Yeah, I forget who it was, but I, I didn't. Uh, Wilson Pickett was one. Yeah, yeah. But he just got that. He said he was twelve Roasting years old and just love that stuff. And then you really, you can really hear it. Like it makes total sense. He loves that. Oh, he does that. Wilson Pickett does that in that song, doesn't he? <coughs> what? Oh, I wish my I wish my fucking voice would work. Remember. I could do it, but or try to. Um, being online slash visible face. Cool. Dinner music is important. Check check. Uh, we have a solo of the week, but before we get to that, I wanted to talk about something interesting I noticed. Where where are we at on time wise? Can we just not do this so long today? Because my voice hurts so yeah, bad. That's fine. 
Yeah, we'll just. I don't know where up. we're at. I'm not trying to rush us, but <coughs> I can just feel my voice we'll getting worse. Probably at least at 30 minutes. Okay. Um, Sorry if this was short, I, guys. I scrolled through Instagram and I saw a Motley Crue post. I thought it was on their. Oh yeah, let's I thought talk it was about on the their main Crew. Facebook page, but I went back to find it. It wasn't, so it must have been somewhere else, right, fan page this. or something. But the question was, um, or the caption was something along the lines of, uh, "We're all excited about the dirt, you know, blah 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 blah." Here's a picture of the crew. What was your favorite part about seeing them live? So naturally, I start scrolling through all the comments. Like, yeah, you oh, want to know the favorite part? Dude, no one said music. <laughs> Not one person said music. Yeah. yeah I've seen all, and, and what do we as musicians worry about? Yeah, we're, Only we're def- the music. Sure. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's not that the songs aren't good, I don't think. But when people go to those shows, man, they, that is such a show. I've been to them, man. They're so good. Um, and there's other bands that rival them for sure. Kiss is another one that's like very close to the same. Like Just amazing performance and... Uh, performance as far as the show goes, you know Production what I mean. Music is, is the music, you know, and they and they always play that good enough, you know what I mean. For me, Vince Neil and Motley Crue, seeing them live is not the best thing about them at all. So that's for sure. Um, I don't think any any member of Motley Crue is really that good. I like Nikki. Tommy Six. Lee's probably the Tommy's best. good. Tommy and I like McMars, man. It's just, it's just, I just depends on what have. you like. It depends on what you like. They're nothing, raunchy, nothing rock and McMars roll. has done has ever made me be like, "Fuck, that guy's great." Like I, I, I should, nothing. I should find no something. solo is like killer no, like all right no i'm gonna find killer, something like, i'm gonna find something change your mind all right i know there's some right. deep motley crew tracks that i think will maybe i mean i like a lot of motley crew tracks it's just never the solos that i like all right well and I'm i've heard enough of his solos mind. to get it just for his style. my new mission is to change your mind about mcmars i love mcmars that's a good good luck you Aww. know what album i really like is the what one where hater. vince wasn't with them <laughs> what a hater what the one where uh well the the first one where john karabi yeah john karabi self-titled album dude they self-titled it when vince neil quit the band what dick so funny it's in the 90s it's when nobody heard of him and then they did uh, generation swine after that was was before he came back right or was he so, back for generation i think i wish kyle was there kyle knows everything him. about mike crew he I likes Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah he loves Motley Crue. of course they did uh they did two without so vince neil i believe um, anyway, I love Karabi. He's in the Dead Daisies, and they're one of my favorite Karabi's bands. Karabi's amazing. We uh, we think that uh, album much is so underrated. Singer, much Kyle better singer because he can, well, not because, but he can also still sing really well. So like Absolutely. he's really good live. Absolutely, you know? and I've seen him on his solo stuff. He's great. You guys need to listen to the Dead Daisies. They do yeah, a song I've, heard, with Slash. I've definitely heard lots it's of the really Dead Daisies good. for sure. Dead I've, Daisies has Doug Aldrich, um, Dean Castronovo. Yep. It has Richard Fortas. Supergroup. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. we did the thing. Supergroup or not on that, didn't we? If uh, not, it's on the list. We need to do them on them. We'll do it do that on them i already anyway, had it written down the things i saw through this instagram post were things like uh it made me feel like a kid again or right, uh, nostalgia. i'm looking forward to the fire or i'm looking a lot several people said everything pyro right stupid. like or right uh, a lot of people show. said the production the spinning drum thing i don't know you know that kind of shit sure um i thought that was really interesting to notice that no one was like the songs <laughs> <laughs> you know like yeah, I mean, but all that kind of is part. It's all around the songs. Like I, I know what you're saying it. It is funny that people don't say that, but you know, it's all around it, right? You well, I mean? no, the songs get them in the door, right? But that's not why they're going. If they wanted right. to see the, if they just wanted to hear the songs, they listen. They to the got radio. the CD, right? So I mean, that's not why they're going to these shows, right? Because if I wanted to hear the songs, I would not pay two hundred dollars a ticket. It's the you show. You know what I mean? It's for sure the show. Like it's all of it, though. And it is really but what's people, interesting. When is people like, say like all Bruce of it, I, saying, I really think it is. It's like it's like too much to even list. Like you go. Well, I love seeing Tommy Lee's drum solo, and I also love, you know, uh, see what Nikki Six is going to do, because he's always doing cool stage antics, and uh, Mick Mars, I want to see him solo or whatever, and, you know, he's not going to be around much longer. This guy's, like, you know, how old is he? 65, 70 years old. Like, mm-hmm. With a getting, condition. Getting up there with a condition, exactly. So, definitely, like, there's lots of things, reasons to go see Motley Crue. Um, not anymore. <laughs> well, now they're retired and done, but this movie looks really awesome. Should we do... Do you think it's possible to, to do a Netflix watch party or no? I don't think so. No. We'll it's just not looking good. Else. It looks more personal than to something. Be able to... I think what you're thinking of is the is the like live release watch parties on YouTube, and that's for your own videos. Okay. You can release your yes. own video and promote it and say, hey, let's yes, all watch my can. own you're new right. video together. That could be what I'm mixing it up with. Man, I really wish Netflix had that party watch thing. If everybody has Netflix, right? If everybody has the account, we were, why wouldn't you well, be able let's to just all about, start at the same time and then maybe have a comment section added to it? Let's That'd be talk so about cool. what we're talking about. We wanted to do some sort of commentary, live watching, something, live viewing, something like that. So all like we got to do is post dirt. a time, have everybody watch it on Netflix, right? The time, the time is just when everybody's going, sitting down and watching. We'll open it up on Discord or on some other chatting service where we can chat also and have <laughs> you guys chime in on what you're thinking about the movie or whatever. I think that would be fun. And we can... Maybe podcast while we're watching it and actually record the podcast so people can listen and watch. That's what I was saying. Do the commentary. I know. I'm saying I'm trying to, but a way for people to also 
uh, talk while we're doing it. You know what I mean? All simultaneously. And we could come live podcast. If we, if we do a commentary, though, a, a lot of it's going to be silent. Could we know? live podcast? Yeah, but we could read like good comments. Whatever. I don't know how we could live podcast. I guess we could live, go live on YouTube, but and then post the audio later. Let's let's see if it's logistically possible. Isn't it coming out soon. Like we're, like too Next soon month. for us to Next figure month. this out. Oh, okay, we got some time. We do have some time. I mean, I don't know if you, when you're at your new house, if that works out. Let's do that. Let's try something. I, I would like to get uh, at the to, very least. I want to watch it together. Yes, at the very least, we will watch it together. I'd like to get everybody involved and kind of see if we can get too. some comments on it because it is going to be interesting to see how they portray this. Epic Maybe we bands. just go Instagram Live or something like that. Maybe. How long? You can do that for an hour or whatever, two hours, right? I didn't know there were time limits on it, are there? Well, the, yeah, I don't think there is. You're right. That'd be cool. Instagram Live That's could crazy. Work. And they can comment on Instagram Live, right? Let's just do that. Instagram I mean, Live is, Instagram, yeah, you have like a live feed, yeah. Let's do that. That works. Um, that's an interesting uh, thing, yeah. Let's we'll post about it. Let's make a post so everybody knows when we're watching it. And then we'll, uh, we'll keep reminding people, whatever, in stories and whatnot. And then we'll uh, see if we can get some people to come out there and listen to it with us or watch it with us. It'll be fun. That sounds good. I like that. And we can commentate while we're doing it. My hair's starting to get long. I'm growing it out. Nice. How long you got? What How do long think? do I have right now? Two inches, three inches? Oh, it's not long at all right <laughs> now. It's getting longer than it has been. Yeah. Dude, it took forever for me to grow my hair out. But I don't get haircuts, so it's easy. You've had it for that long forever. You save a lot of money. Yeah. Yep. You never get haircuts at all? So you just let it die? When uh, when my hair gets caught in the tuners of my guitar, they, that cuts it a little bit. Okay. When it's flying around and I get caught in my uh, wrapped around something. So does your hair out. not just keep getting longer? How does that work? It literally stays trimmed. I mean, but you do know you what trim it? happens, huh? Do you trim it or anything? No. No, it's just like, it's it's getting longer. It's for get, sure getting longer. Does your hair grows slow? Well, I'm getting older, bro. <laughs> I don't think it grows really as fast, fast when you're older. My hair like when you're young, really when I was fast. young, dude, I'd get my hair buzzed. Like as a kid, my, mm -hmm. you know, it was hot in the summer. We lived in Florida. Um, <clears throat> we'd get my hair buzzed and it would be fucking back like that, dude. I, I don't even remember there being much downtime. <coughs> but we, I, always, I was always a still. shaggy haired kid. And then I just yeah, really I thought, accepted you know, it when my older age. Because like, if I'm going to play the rock star, like I got to look, look the part, you know. Do it for the love of having long hair, bro. It's cool. Chicks dig it too. Jordan's gonna love it. I don't like it. <laughs> what I does Jordan know. feel about it? She prefers short. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Well, they're gonna have a battle then. With the scissors, she's gonna exactly. cut your hair off when you sleeping, dude. She'll cut her hair to bald, and I will grow mine out long as fuck. So <laughs> we'll just be a very attractive couple. It's gonna I'll be have good. mine down to like my like thighs. Use the shit out of people. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. We have a uh, solo of the week. To talk yeah, let's about. do that, man. My voice is about done, dude. Stripper Girl <laughs> by Steel Panther. Let's take a Dude, listen. Dude, I've always thought this solo is so good. All right, let's take a listen. Here we go. All right, there you go. That's, that's uh, the first word that comes to mind is hilarious so epic and like over the top like like 80s I metal like, was you know i feel like and maybe i'm giving them too much credit but i feel like they've nailed it. everything they do is a spoof and i feel like even this solo is a spoof it's so deep bro it's all so deep they're laid they, yeah and and i know that for a fact that this song was the first one that they wrote like as an original um because they were metal school before they were steel panther and they were just a cover band on the strip and uh, I know one time they were talking about, uh, I saw this in an interview somewhere that uh, Satchel said he wrote this song, the music for it, riding with Michael Starr uh, on the way to uh, Las Vegas to play a gig. And Michael Starr just started singing this song about a stripper. And, you know, they're going to Vegas, so it just seemed maybe appropriate that's or whatever. That's funny, man. And, uh, yeah, that's, and that was the first song. And that might have been, maybe this is the beginning of Steel Panther's, you know, what, what came to be Steel Panther. I love that story. Um, thank and you, also, thank you for sharing. What a great fucking solo! Like, just so the so guy is so talented. I, the solo to me really Russ. fits that quintessential '80s solo from bands like Triumph, Autograph, Cinderella. Yeah, like those kind of bands. All their solos were kind of the same. You could tell. I thought it was a lot of Journey in there, like just big epic, like sound. That here's and, one thing that I like. I, I see well, so much. I wouldn't it. put Journey in that category at all. I just like the long, the not the shreddy parts, like so much, like where he really breaks it down and run, does that rundown. That's but I think those long, part, right? huh? It's yeah, tapping, right? Right. Yeah. But um, so the the long just bends and just like he had some tasty stuff in there. Just for tasty sure. for that's sure. That's very Neil Sean. I'll give yeah, you that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But uh, but for me, I don't like hearing a solo that sounds like it has been scripted. 
to me it's like watching bad acting you know what really? I mean? you think that sounds scripted uh, no, no, no. I don't think okay. his necessarily sounds scripted. I think he's spoofing all the solos that sound scripted. I think he's trying to come up with a memorable solo too, though. I think that song, that solo right there, I can like hum it in my head the whole time, like while, sure. it's, while it's happening. Poison, nothing but a good time. That solo sounds really scripted right. to me because you can tell he they go through like sections. Yeah. Like you can tell, like okay, here's the first part he wrote. Yeah. Then I'm he goes to the Poison second part. Fan, there, so. Here comes the fast part, and then here comes the shrit, and then right, here's right. the tapping part. Formulaic. You know, like, I think formulaic is what you autograph. Mean. Triumph Maybe more again, than, all more these than bands. scripted. You think formulaic might be the word, but they sound scripted to me. Like Slash's solos are scripted, but they don't sound scripted. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's not well, making that up. He's played it that way for years. Yeah, since before it was recorded, mm-hmm. he always played it the same way. But like, right? So it's more. Maybe it's like. So it's scripted, but it's not. Del- it's good acting. Right. You know what I mean? You watch a good actor, you feel what he's saying. You would watch you, a bad actor, you, you can so tell he's just that memorizing it's perfected? words. Like he's played it so many times that he's really honed it. No, because these the- guys are playing playing it perfected as well. It's just written in a way that's right. bad. Like, as in, like, it just right. sounds like... Uh, well, I don't think this solo is written in a way that it's, like, trying to be... I'm not talking about this solo. But even I'm talking that it's about trying this, to be that, though. You know what I mean? It's, like, we're trying, to, spoofing trying it. to spoof it. I don't know. I don't think that's what he's going for, to be honest. I, I bet more than anything he was going for a memorable, like, you can sing along to it. And then that shreddy, like, breakdown at the end of it kind of is just the, like, the show off. It feels to me like it has the, of the 80s kind of thing. The, like, very much like the... Um, it's hard to explain unless you've the parts, the parts of an '80s solo. I hear what yeah. you're saying. I totally get what you're saying, but I just don't know if that he was he was going for that. But he knows what that sound is. He, he's playing an '80s metal kind of song. I just right? I don't know that all the other Valid. aspects of this band are spoofs, but this solo is the serious one that he was really going well, balls the, out. For. Like you know I what said, I mean? Like, this was the first one, so it's possible that this one well, was the one they recorded that they really all went. at the same time though. So we don't know when that when like the, song the solo was, finished, was written. You know? Right, right. The lyrics and chorus and stuff, you know, that right. might have been the first. So part, apparently, though. though, what the story goes to finish it off, how that like this, they was the first song they wrote, and they started playing it in their set, and just people started requesting that song. That was the one they wanted to hear. They loved it. They la- made that's them laugh. Fun. Oh yeah, they loved funny. how good it was. So that and then we're like, okay, we're on to something here, and that's what maybe like just sparked the that's whole interesting. thing. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I want to find that interview. Maybe we can post it or something. It was well, really who was good. in the interview? Who was saying it? Uh, I believe it was Russ. It was either him or it was Mike, one of those guys, but I believe it was Russ. Russ is Satchel. Satchel, the guitar yeah. Player. Sorry, we should probably call him by their character. People don't know. I feel weird about that now, though. Like I don't know why. It just feels weird to call him Satchel. If I'm talking about the person himself writing, right? You know what I mean, like right. that. He has a hard name to say, Russ Parrish. Yeah, Russ Parrish, because you want to say Rush. Parrish. You right, say Rush, Rush Parrish. Parrish. Right. It's funny. Never thought about that. Um, yeah, man, that's a killer solo. I want to go back to my acting First, analogy. You'll pay it, the it feels like some of those old eighty solos. Not not talking about this one. It feels like um, when you're watching bad acting, <laughs> you can tell someone is just delivering a script. Well, yeah, you've seen them play, obviously. We met at the Steel Panther show. It's funny that they are kind of bad acting. Like, that's the idea. They're like, oh, wow, look at me. Like, they're, right, they're right. doing that they're thing. They're playing the part, which is right. hilarious. It's so well, great. What's so funny is it makes it would stand I, a reason. I think, all I, I'm saying is it would stand a reason that the solo is kind of written like that. Too, right, right. This is how much credit I give them, though. Over the I top. think they are so good at acting right. that they're pretending to act bad. Right. That's how, act, that's how good I think right, these guys are, right. like, for real. They're acting I, like they're not good at acting. Right, exactly, because <laughs> totally. those are the best ones to do it. Right, it's because funny. I and feel like funny. if they, if they really the wanted to turn it. it on, they yeah. could, and you'll be like, "Oh my god!" Sure, like, sure. But you know they're doing. Actually, here's a great fucking segue into their acting chops. They do those Steel Panther TVs. Yes. where They remake those movies, and they're doing. Pulp, they just. Oh, I haven't seen those. One. I've seen like the Science Panther. Oh, check them like out that, on yeah. uh, Instagram now. They're posting these. Um, well, not on Instagram. It's actually on YouTube. But they've been posting. They have clips a really good them. YouTube channel. They've, they've been they've posting dominated the that. trailers on on Instagram of their movies. They're redoing these movies. They're kind of doing spoofs on them. In, a, in their own way or whatever, their own musical and, and metal way. Um, like, so they just did Pulp Fiction was the one they just recently did. And I have not watched the video. I saw the trailer and I cannot wait to see the video. I think it came out Friday. I think they're coming out every Friday, which is smart. Just to keep their eye on people with, I mean, uh, people's eyes on them without actually just making a record over and over yeah. and over. You know? No, they have a really, and I don't know if it's them or a team or a combination, but they have a really good YouTube channel that yeah, has killing. really funny their ideas. Their online presence is great. The Science Panther, which is where people submit their like science questions and yeah. they just answer them and they have no they have fucking Lexi, idea what they they're talking Lexi about. They like, answer them always. It's so funny. Yeah. People are asking him like, um, how is water formed? Yeah. And they're just like, <laughs> fucking They make it up as they go. dude. Like they have <laughs> no idea what they're talking about. Like, it, oh, it's just like you get it in a bottle, you open up the top. Why and is you the drink. sky blue? You know, like, where's how's water form? Oh, you just get it in a bottle and you just open the lid and you, you know, then you drink yeah, it. You can do whatever done, you want dude. with it. There you go. <laughs> Any closing they'll, they'll thoughts? They'll simplify it. Um, As we wide down. I'm just gonna say that my voice is shot. I think it, I'm sorry that if I sound vocal fried. 
I'm going to uh, edit this one tomorrow. I'm not going to edit it tonight. Add some gain to my voice. Add some gain. I'll add distortion. In. Yeah, make it sound like I'm wicked sta- delay to a walkie verb, talkie, dude. Over and out, like I'm a walkie talkie. Who made the joke the other day? Um, delay and verb is called uh, soul and talent. <laughs> I don't know who made that joke. Sounds funny. It though. might have been someone real- with the evening with the stars crew. But someone was like, yeah, and then I put a little delay and verb on it, or as I like to call it, soul and talent. <laughs> it's like, it's interesting it's almost because... that joke that where the boss pedals, they, re, they Photoshop them and they name yeah. them. Yeah. Talent booster. Talent, or whatever yeah. Like, yeah. There's this really funny, I watch these, uh, I love watching in the studio videos, which mm. by the way, Steel Panther has the funniest the in the studio the videos best. I've ever seen. But I was watching a Dream Theater one, and um, Mike Portnoy's at the board, and they have labeled a track, they have labeled tracks, mm. and he... <laughs> He says, as you can see, the rock track, Mm-mm. they labeled it rock, right. is, is all the way up. And, this, <laughs> and the suck and gay tracks are almost completely off. Yeah. <laughs> then obviously, right, they're not <laughs> they used. They labeled one just, suck and one gay. Keep those and down. And they were all the way down. Nice. <laughs> it's funny. If I wonder if there really was something that they just didn't like it. And they're like, yeah, we're going to label these suck and gay. Yeah, I think they're down. just being funny. I think it was funny, right? It's funny, Man, though. I'm ready to chat a little bit about this concept album after we get off the air here. Yeah, dude. Not for too long. My voice hurts. I want to talk for three to four hours. Oh, all right. I guess that's not that bad. I sent you a calendar invite. It right, says man. three hours. Let's uh, let's sign off. You, you sign really off. Read I those always things. sign off. You sign off. Um, this is Matt. Over and out. Add gain to my vocals. Okay. Well, that's why I sign off. Obviously, that was terrible. What? See you guys next time.